Okay, so now that you've completed uh, slide one of the Tuesday assignment slides, we're going to move on. By the way, um, my videos can only be about 15 minutes long, so that will be, um, you'll have to go to the next video in order for uh, us to continue on. Okay, so you've completed slide one. Now we're going to go over some of those details. How do you use parentheses to solve this problem? Now, we've gone over parentheses uh, last week, and parentheses mean that you are going to do this problem first. What is in the parentheses is what you are doing first. What does 3 times 2 represent in the story? Now, it said that the, um, I forget the guy's name, um, he scored, he played in three games and scored two goals each time, Quincy. He played three soccer games, he scored two goals each time. So on the first game, he scored two goals. Second game, he scored two goals. Third game, he scored two goals. So it would be two plus two plus two, or the same as three times two, as you're doing that. What does the 10 represent? Now the way that it's written like that is because he wants to get to 10, so we need to find out how much more does he need. So that's why the 10 rep is there. And that is also why it is subtracted. So it could be 10 minus 3 times 2. It could also be 3 times 2 plus mm, equals 10. But we wanted it all on one side of the equal sign. So that way you know what you're solving, if that makes sense. So, 10 minus 3 times 2. Why does the number model include the parentheses? This kind of goes with what I was telling you before in that the parentheses has to happen first, right? So, that indicates that we have to do 3 times 2 first. And if it wasn't there, then you guys might have done 10 minus 3 first, right? And then 10 minus 3 equals 7, 7 times 2 equals 14, and that's not the answer that we want. So how many steps are in this number story? I'll give you a moment to think about it. How many steps are in this number story? The answer is 2, okay? This is a two-step number story. 3 times 2, you do first. That's the first step. Then the second step is taking that and 10 minus that answer to get your result. I already went over the steps. <laughs> so there you go. First, you got to do 3 times 2, get that answer. Then you do 10 minus your answer, and that's how you get your result. Now, here we have 10 minus 3 times 2, right? Does this number sentence fit the number story. First you have 10 items and you take three away, then you times everything times two. No, this is not a good way to do it because you're gonna get a totally different answer and it does not match the story being told, okay? So, and the reason why is because it doesn't match the story being told. Why might we use parentheses in a number model we write to represent a two-step number story? Why would we use parentheses when we are creating the two-step number story? Well, we need them so that way whoever is solving the problem is able to know what step to do first in order to get the right answer. Now, slide two of your Tuesday assignment. What could four times two represent? Think of the number story you created with your math comic. In this problem, this slide two, you are creating the number story. And the number story is, let me go back and see what it was for you guys. It is, write a two-step number story to fit the number sentence below. 12 minus 4 times 2 equals 4. 
So what you have to do is first figure out what could four times two represent, okay? And remember, we want that each, you know, that each word. Um, there are four baskets and each has two mm, in them. And then you have to include why am I subtracting or why do I have 12 and I'm subtracting my answer from it? Okay. Or maybe your goal is to get to 12 and now you know how many you have, how much more do you need? Okay. So I'm giving you a lot of hints of what I'm telling you in writing this problem. Okay. So you are telling me a story. Your, it's, your story is going to sound a lot like Quincy played three soccer games and each game he scored two goals. How many more goals does Quincy need for a total of 10 goals? You could do something incredibly similar in order to do this assignment. Okay. So usually we would have recess right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead. So that is the end of math. That is the only two things that I will require of you to do today because those are big things. You got to think really analytically about creating this number story, which is incredibly hard. So you will do fine. All right. Yay, ELA. I will be able to create sentences using words that have a double O vowel pair. Now, we went over this um, last week. Um, we went over each word. Um, sound, long O sounds that sound like rooster, food, spoon, to, room. And then we have the short double O sounds like book, looked, would, good, stood. It's got the uh instead of the oo sound. All right. So using the correct pronunciation of words you read will help you with both fluency and comprehension because you'll be able to understand the words as you're reading them. In the case of unfamiliar double O words, you could drive both the short uh pronunciation and the long oo pronunciation to see which one results in a familiar sounding word. So your guys' assignment is you're going to read the kid and the wolf. You're going to circle all of the double O words. You're going to find this chart. It will be slide three in your Tuesday assignments. And you're going to list all of those double O words. Now, this is how you get to the kid and the wolf. Okay. So you're going to get onto Google. You're going to go to clever.com. You're going to log in as student. I'm going to log in as teacher because I don't think it'll work if I try and log in as you guys. Log in with Google. Always use your fsusd.org email. Once you're in and you are in Stuart's third grade class, you'll scroll down. Oh no, I don't have it saved anymore. <gasps> I got to get that one back. Let's go benchmark. So as I searched it, I found here's benchmark. I need, I need to save this so that way you guys have it. Hopefully by the time you guys are watching this video, I have it saved. So that way it is on the teacher page. Let's see. Let's see. My class resources. Drag resources into the Browse the library to find your resources. Library. Where is benchmark? Do you know what? I can do this later because you guys will be able to find it um, once you get there. Okay. So. Oh, how nice. Okay. So when you are here, it's going to look different. You're going to have library assignments and different things like that. You are going to click on library. And when that pops up, this is what is going to, uh, it'll look something like this. Now, sometimes it's on eBooks. It's all, it'll be on ebooks instead. So what you want to do is actually click on this and go to benchmark advance. Okay. Click third grade because everybody's in third grade. And you're going to go down to unit six, our making decisions workbook. Ah, 
Now for me, it looks differently. The book is just going to open for you and that's good. But for me, I have to, now I have to go through all these things because the book didn't just open for me. Okay. Now here comes the book. Now the kid and the wolf is after Dr. No Wall. So it should be on page. It'll be page 20, okay? It's not that long. Now, if you want it to read out loud to you while you go along and go through and find those double O words, you can. That's fine. You just press this play button and it'll read out loud for you. You also have some tools here on the side where you can highlight um, or use a pen and you could circle the words as you go. Um, wow, that's a big pen. So, one day a kid was in a pasture grazing with a herd of other goats as a kid as young as a goat. As a young goat. That was weird. Now, although this kid was young, he was big and strong for his age. He thought he was two. Ah, oh, here's one. There's two. So I circled it. I don't know why there's this right here. So I circled it while I was doing that, or I could use a highlighter, whichever one you want to do. Okay. I could delete the, um, the drawing. So I have the word two. Now when I go into my assignment, long oo sound, is it rooster or is it short? Uh, like book. So, um, I would put it in the proper one. And then I'll continue on to read. Um, like I said, you could press the play button to have it read aloud for you if you want to listen for those words. Um, if you want to read it yourself, sound them out. Um, make sure you are sounding out to yourself so that way you know how it's pronounced. Uh, anywho, so that is your assignment. Slide three. Now, for the next few slides, I have a lot of different questions. Now, these are questions um, about the reading. How is the selection similar to and different from The Fox and the Geese? I think one thing that was similar to The Fox and the Geese was mm. I think some, one thing that was different to The Fox and the Geese was mm. These are just some examples for you to use. If you want, you don't have to use these if you do not want to. What did this selection add to your knowledge of how people solve problems? This adds to my understanding of how people solve problems because, mm, how did your knowledge of long and short double O sounds help you read this text, either silently or aloud? One word I was able to out sound out loud is, mm. Now, also, this is, I believe, your last assignment for today. Um, here are your spelling words, rooster, foolish, choose, food, looked, took, wooden, and good. It's a combination of those long double O sounds and the short uh double O sounds. So that is your last assignment uh, for Tuesday. Here, oh, um, create sentences. Um, for instance, a sentence that I would do for rooster would be, I have not seen a rooster in a very long time. <laughs> Or something like that. Um, here are a bunch of different Go Noodle activities. If you're feeling like you want to move around in your house, but safely and comfortably, uh, please feel free to do these uh, PE activities. They will pretty much be the same uh, every day. I will continue to post them. Um, do them in any order that you want. Um, and that is basically it. Thank you, Noah, for finding this really cool video. Um, enjoy some mindfulness time of just enjoying this video. Um, also, please do not forget to do your silent reading. 30 minutes silent reading every day. Okay? Um, and I believe that's it. I will see you guys tomorrow. You guys have an amazing rest of your day. Get to work on those assignments. And I will be checking on you. And make sure that you are also um, responding to my Google Hangout things. Okay? All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.